Hello Zero K fans and welcome to this tutorial on economy and production in Zero K. The most important thing to know about the way the economy works in Zero K is that it is a flow based economy system. There is no discrete spending or income, instead income and spending is in terms of flows of resources per second. Every metal extractor and power plant, those all provide a certain amount of, res of metal and energy per second. Every constructor, your commander, every factory, those consume a certain amount of metal and energy per second in order to do their thing, to build stuff. When building something, every unit and building has a particular cost. This is listed at the bottom of all of their icons. Similarly, every building has a cost. All these buildings, once again, have their costs listed as numbers under the icon. Now, if you notice, there's only one number here. This is because metal and energy are spent in equal amounts to construct units, and they're spent according to the constructor's build power. Every build power that a certain structure or constructor or your commander has causes it to spend one metal and one energy per second to construct the unit or building in question. For example, glaive here costs 65 metal, so you need to spend 65 metal and 65 energy to build it. Given that a factory, by default, has 10 build power, that means that it puts 10 metal and 10 energy per second into the construction of the glaive. And once all 65 metal and energy has been put into the glaive, the glaive is complete. Like I said, 10 build power, therefore you can work backwards by division to find that the glaive will take 6.5 seconds to construct. And if we start building it, we'll see that is in fact the case. See, it takes about 6.5 seconds and it's done. An important thing to note about the way that 0k's economy works is that you can actually assist with other units. So constructors of your commander can assist a factory. In this case, 20 build power will be used instead of 10. So the 65 metal will be coming in in 20 metal and energy per second, not 10 metal and energy per second. Thus, the glaive will be built in 3.2 seconds rather than 6.5. This is very important as you get more resources because you need to spend it all. Your income and spending is listed over here. The top right corner, or depending on where you move your resource bar, by default top right corner, if you have income in reserve, you can actually spend more than you have until you run out of reserve. For the most part, you'll want to keep your income and spending about the same for metal, and you'll want to have more income than spending for energy, because energy is used for other things. If you are spending more metal than you have income, you can only spend, at that point, as much as you have income. So, for example, if we continue to build up more and more units such that we end up just running out of reserve metal, you'll see, let me speed up the game briefly, you'll see that we run out of reserve metal and should keep going with this. Once we're out of the reserves, you'll notice the construction time of the factory and the constructor, the commander combined is equal to the income. We're actually only losing even though it's saying it's draining 20 metal and energy per second, we're actually only losing 10. It's only using 10 to build the warrior here. If we click on the warrior, well, I can't say on the warrior, but the factory is using 5, and the commander is using, well, 5 minus the 4 that it gets by default. Commanders get 4 metal and 8 energy at the start of the game. They can be upgraded to increase this amount for energy. Anyhow, if you're worried about spending, not just in this situation, but also when you're constructing something. There is in fact a priority system. So if I build a bunch of collectors here, at this point there's only enough metal for the commander and the factory to operate at half capacity. There's 10 metal income. Each of these has 10 build power, but the metal is split between them, and the energy is not a bottleneck in this case, though it could be. Now, if I want the commander to be the only one to produce something, I can change its priority. There are three priority settings, low, medium, and high. High means that the commander, or whatever is being constructed, in this case the commander, takes its build power worth of resources first, and then the rest goes to everything else. In this case, it's taking all the resources. Now, important thing to note is that if both of them are at high priority, then once again, the resources are split, as if they were the same. So if the priorities are the same, the resources remain split, but if something is a higher priority than another thing, so for example, the factor is at low priority and the commander is at medium priority, then, once again, the commander will take its share of resources first, leaving the factory with the scraps. 
Now the factory itself does have some interesting commands as well for dealing with unit production. As I've shown, you can click on the icon in order to build one of the unit or add it to the queue. However, you can hold shift and click in order to add five of a unit to the queue. You can hold control to add 20 and both at the same time to add 100. Similarly, if you right click while holding those modifiers, you can reduce it by that amount. As well, factories can be set to run infinitely. So whatever's in the queue will end up just continuously building over and over. Lastly, if you want to, for example, you want to rush something, you can hold the Alt key and click on something, or hit its hotkey. When you do this, it'll preempt the current construction, causing it to be replaced by the construction you want. This does mean that you're going to be running a bunch of build power into something and switching it out. That build power is not preserved. Like, that's wasted. So be careful when you use it. However, if you're in infinite build mode, what happens instead is that the unit is added temporarily to the queue. It's added to the queue, but only once. Once it is completed, it is no longer in the queue. It's not part of the infinite queue, it's simply added in as the next item to be built, but only until... actually, just to emphasize, it's added in as the next item to be built. But once it's done, it's out of the queue. So if you only want to build a few of a certain unit while keeping your standard infinite unit composition, hold the Alt button, or Alt key rather, and click. Or use the hotkey. Of course, in order to have an economy in the game, you have to have the structures to produce the resources in question. First off, we'll go over the energy structures. There are six different types of energy structures. Well, seven, I suppose. There are tidal generators, also, or wind generators. In the water, they are tidal generators. On land, they are wind generators. In the water, they produce constant 1.2 energy and are actually very cost-effective. On land, it varies. It varies with time. Although, it also helps if they're high up. Right now, we see that this wind generator is producing 1.3 energy, while the one on the hill is producing 1.5. The higher they are up, the higher their minimum energy production level is. There's solar plants, which are considerably tougher than wind generators, but are twice as expensive. So if wind generators are producing more than one energy per second, they're more cost-effective than solar collectors, but they may not necessarily survive as long in a raid. Geothermal plants can only be built on particular spots on the map, geothermal vents. They smoke, they have a little crack in the bottom, and if you're in economy view, there's a yellow line going up from them. So you know you can build them there. They do, however, produce 25 energy per second, and are quite cost effective compared to the solar collector. They produce over 10, they produce 12 times as much for a little over eight times the cost. Actually, a little under eight times the cost. A little over seven times the cost, really. Very cost effective, but space limited. Last, well, fusion reactor, second to last, is a power plant which is great in the late game 1v1 or team games because it's once again quite cost effective. Not quite as cost effective as the geothermal plant, but it can be built anywhere. It produces 35 power per second, and it costs a fair bit more than a solar collector, but once again, it's only one structure where a solar collector in order to build as many for as much power. I mean, this is equivalent to 17 solar collectors, but it doesn't cost 17 times as much. It cl costs closer to 14 times as much. So once again, a bit more cost effective, but singularly more expensive. It also will explode violently if destroyed. And lastly is the Singularity Reactor. This is something that's very suitable in late game team games and free-for-alls, but in 1v1 rarely if ever comes up. 4,000 metal for 225 energy per second. Extremely useful, but very expensive and takes a long time to build. There's also an upgrade to the geothermal power plant, the Moho geothermal plant, which is three times as expensive, but is often used because it is, it's there. The power plant's there, you might as well have it. Of course, it does take a little while to build up because that is, as I mentioned before, a thousand metal and energy being poured into this. So it takes as long as it takes to pump a thousand metal energy in, in order to be done. Which in this case is actually fairly slow. But when it's complete, you end up with 1500 metal producing 100 energy per second. So once again, quite cost efficient, but also requires a particular point on the map in order to be built. 
The other primary resource structure is the metal extractor. Metal extractors can be built on metal spots. You'll notice them, they are typically metal silvery patches on the map, or if you're in F4 mode, they are just yellow circles with little iron girders below them, signifying how much metal they provide. Most metal spots provide two metal per second. Some provide more, some provide less, but the vast majority in 0k provide two. In order to build a metal extractor, you simply go to the Econ tab and click on the metal extractor, or hit the hotkey, and click where the metal extractor should go. Or, go to the Area Max hotkey, click on that, or use the hotkey, and drag a circle in order to produce multiple mexes. Each metal extractor, like I said, produces two metal by default. However, it's possible if you have excess energy to increase the amount of metal that a particular metal extractor produces. We build a bunch of solar collectors around this metal extractor. Currently, it is producing two metal per second. But as we add solar collectors, it starts to produce more. It takes power in order to produce this, so every excess energy bit of excess energy does produce more power based on the number of power plants nearby. Right now there's 8 energy, so that's producing about 1.7 times. If we bring it up to 12 energy, it'll end up doubling. However, there are diminishing returns here. Each metal extractor, as it gets overdriven, gets less and less benefit for each subsequent power plant. So 12 energy provides a doubling effect, while you need 32 energy to triple it. That being said, if you link up multiple metal extractors to your power grid, you'll overcharge all of them, well, based on what and how much energy there is, but it will end up splitting that among all the metal extractors, but because you want to have somewhere around 10 to 14 energy or so, that gets split across, becomes very efficient if you're doubling all of your metal extractor output, rather than pouring in a ton of energy into a single metal extractor and not getting as much of a return. Also, it's important to note that, that this is not an adjacency bonus. It's simply a matter of excess energy is fed into the metal extractors if there are power plants nearby. You can also tell by the colors. If the grid is purple, that means there's nothing around it. If it's blue or green, that means you're in a pretty good range for efficiency. As you can see, green is roughly doubling. If it's yellow or red, that means that you're using too much energy on too few metal extractors. You want to spread that around a bit more. But... You want to keep it around blue or green, that's the ideal point. So anyway, I hope that's been informative for all you, and have fun in the game!